You've talked about how you know you intend to. We, we need to know how much it is that we're actually paying workers, who the workers are. Yeah. And I think uh, we've seen you on TV a couple of times talking about how the BVN has helped you, mm -hmm. you know, weed out even more ghost workers mm -hmm. whom you intend to hand over to security yes. agencies. Are you following up with security agencies on, you know, the status of these people? Yes. Uh, because people would say that there needs to be a deterrent. People must Absolutely. stop, you know, be, being ghost workers in the ministry. Absolutely. The, the, the thing is, uh, I mean, first thing to say is the FCC are doing a splendid job. They've actually set up a complete unit that deals, is dealing with payroll fraud, and they are going to start to take people to court. But what we've discovered, interestingly, is it's actually a syndicate in some cases. There's actually almost like an organized network, and I, and I don't want to speak too much about how they were doing it, because some people may now decide that that's a good business to go into. But it, it, it's a worrying trend, um, and, and it's something... We spend 165 billion naira every month on salaries and pensions. When I came into office, there was no audit. There were no controls. Once you get onto the payroll, they pay you forever. Even dead people were still being paid. We have now put in what we call a continuous audit team. They do nothing else but auditing that payroll, checking people randomly. And that's how we're still uncovering. There's still more. And I don't like calling them ghost workers because some of them died. No one told us they died. Some of them changed job but they were able to collect two salaries. We had one lady who was arrested. Did they have BVN? It was BVN that caught her. She was actually collecting two salaries. She had moved from one hospital to another and continued to collect salary in the old hospital. And when uh, the EFCC um, interviewed her, she said we should show her where it's written that she shouldn't collect two salaries. I mean, wow. don't, don't, but, but you see, the thing is, we shouldn't blame, I mean, I'm never interested in who, who did it. I'm always interested in how they did it so that we can block the leakages because even if you arrest that person and another person comes if you don't plug how the person was able to do it it will continue so we are using this opportunity to learn how was it done so that we can block those leakages so now for example on a quarterly basis the heads of all the agencies are being sent their payroll sign off indicate that you know these people and they're writing back 10 20 30 40 in some cases 100 people saying I don't know these names Meanwhile, they're being paid. So we are blocking the leakages, and those savings are what we can now use to fund you know, our own programs. But yes, people will be prosecuted. Well, in March, you spoke about a certain 350 billion naira that was going to be injected yeah. into the system. Yeah. What's the level of disbursement? It, it's, it, no disbursement until the budget is, is signed, which is uh, why we're eagerly awaiting the budget. It is a stimulus budget. And once we, we get it signed, we are ready. Uh, and we have started having negotiations, in fact, completing negotiations with many of the big contractors and saying, look, how many people are you re-engaging? Let's get Nigeria back to work. Let's get the programs that we need to drive this economy moving again. And that, those are the discussions that we're having. And, we're quite, and, and in, interestingly, some of these contractors haven't been paid since 2012 on, on, on some of these big federal government projects. And they showed us the records that, look, we, the last payment we got was 2012. You know, I, I still want us to go back to states. Uh, mm. I, I still don't get it how states, uh, because we were here, mm. we were here uh, when Ngozi Okonjo was, was saying that they must save. And uh, we also saw them on live television fighting vehemently, saying that, look, uh, we must share the money. Mm. And uh, we were left with uh, nothing, uh, sort of no savings. And you say that the states were saying something good at that time because you also said at a, in one of the governments I, I didn't get quite get that uh, I wanted to also go back to the argument of the states then because for Nigerians mm. they are putting the blame on the table of the governors especially those who uh, were in the forefront of saying that we must share the money and mm. some of them are still in this present government as we speak and uh, it's just as if uh, well the chicken has come home to roost. Mm. Let me explain uh, the structure of state and federal government fund. So 52% of the money actually comes to the federal government. So even if the state government said, okay, we want to spend ours, the federal government too didn't save its portion. We could have saved the federal government's share. We didn't. Federal government was not sh saving. In fact, federal government was borrowing even to pay salaries. And that's where, you know, the disconnect comes in. The states, and I'm not holding candle for the states, if states are responsible, they must be held uh, accountable. But I think it's actually unfair for federal government to say, you were the one that forced me to spend. I can, I can spend mine, but I can't force you to spend yours. Federal government too didn't uh, save its share. So I think we collectively, I don't think we should be trading blame. I think what we should sit down and do now is say, 
what lessons have we learned? The lesson everybody has learned, I think state, federal, local government, is that we must have savings. And even if we don't have the cash, let's do the investment. You know, look at the Saudi Arabians. They have about $700 billion of reserves, cash, unspent, right? We have about 28. The Emiratis, they built Dubai. Oil goes, oil comes, they're there. They have something to show for it. So you, ha you, ha you have to have one or the other. Unfortunately, we have neither. And we're trying to correct that. So I, I think, you know, the, the, the blame trading, both sides are, are, are guilty. Nobody's saved. Because even though we're running uh, at a deficit, is it okay to ask if we've started saving? Because if we recall what happened in the uh, 2009 and 2010 economic downturn mm. uh, all over the world, mm. uh, Nigeria w was sort of immune because we had savings. Yep. And uh, we reached out to our, you know, exes, yeah. and uh, we were able to, you know, bring some <coughs> form of palliatives. Absolutely. So as it is now, have we started saving, even though we know we are running out of deficit? We can't. You can't save when you're owing, right? So we're not saying. I'm not going to deceive you. We can't save at 38. We can't even make salaries. Look, last month, the whole federal government, uh, the whole federation account shared less than 300 billion naira. That's what we had. Salaries for federal government alone are 165 billion. I couldn't even make my salary, so we're borrowing. These are tough, tough times, and, and you can see it reflected in the streets and in what people are going through. Mm. Well, what do you think about those who argue that wh why should we borrow? Because they, have, uh, they expect that we'll have a certain amount of funds recovered from those who filter the, the monies away, mm. and you could use that money yeah. to finance the deficit. We, we are working on recovering that money. Not all that money is in. Some money is in, but it's, it's, it's not enough. Uh, to fund how much is the it? deficit I don't have the exact figure and I shouldn't quote uh, a figure it's a number of accounts there there's money recovered from oil theft there's money recovered from people being prosecuted there's money even recovered from payroll fraudsters we we compile it and and it will be used to fund the projects of the federal government that we all need uh, are we likely to have a, a, a time uh, where the government is going to brief the people on amount recovered so that we know what uh, is in the coffers of, Absolutely. of recovered funds. Of course. But of you course. know, every time we, when you say that we don't have money, in one breath, mm. I mean, I have been wondering in recent times, I've, I've, I've been seeing the ECA going up, uh, you know, you see, you see on the front pages of the papers, I don't know if you've seen it, mm. uh, maybe t ECA now at $2.1 billion. Mm. Then uh, shortly after, you see another headline saying, we've <coughs> saved, or uh, we now have three trillion naira mm. in the TSA. Yeah. And people are wondering, okay, so it would seem that all, all of this money is coming in yeah. and we keep saying... We don't have money. I think there's a big misunderstanding about TSA and I w thank you for that question because it gives me the opportunity to address it. What is the TSA? The TSA is a huge bank account. So all that happened was all the agencies of government closed their accounts with all the various branch banks and moved them to a single account in the Central Bank of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now at any point in time, the balance on that account, which is the figure that has been quoted, is three point trip, something trillion, maybe to tomorrow it's 2.7. Why is that? Because it's everybody, so NNPC's money is in there. FAC money is in there. Not all of that money is available for spending. You can't just go and take NNPC's money and say, okay, I want to build a bridge. That, some of that money is already earmarked for certain things. Some of that money has liabilities against it. What we are doing is sitting down with the agencies, because each individual agency has a sub-account, and saying, okay, out of your balance in TSA, how much of this is past surpluses that should have come to the federal government? How much of it is free cash flow, so to speak, in which case that can come in to the budget? So it, it, it's not that everything in TSA can be spent. At, at, you know, as at last week before we pay salaries, salaries were in there. You can't take salaries money to say, okay, we want to do railway. So the, the, t the point of the TSA is it's given us better control and it's given us better visibility of government money. Uh, so what is the current, sorry, just a yeah. moment, what's the current state of the ECA? Excess crude. It's the figure you quoted. I think it was quoted last week. I, d I don't have the, it's two points, I think it's about 2.1. Um, that's the figure. It hasn't moved.